Hello everyone, Jennifer here. I'm so happy to be back to the blog. I've really missed you. Um, although it has been fun catching up with a lot of you on Facebook and Twitter, and also at the recent book signing I did at Anthropology Victoria Gardens. That was really so cool to meet readers. The summer has been going well, kind of. I basically broke my toe on the last day of school for my daughter, so I have been hobbling around ever since then. <laughs> so that didn't exactly go to plan, um, but I have um, rested quite a bit. And I wanted to start off my entry back into the blog by sharing with you some really great books that I read over the summer. So here we go. First off is Queen's Gambit by Elizabeth Fremantle. My editor Trish sent me an advanced reader copy of this book because she knows that I love anything to do with royalty. As any of you who follow me on Twitter know, I was tweeting about the royal baby like for two days straight. And she knows me very well because I love this book. This is a work of historical fiction. And Queen's Gambit is basically about Henry VIII's last wife, Catherine Parr, his sixth wife. So basically, we all know the story of Henry VIII. We definitely know about Anne Boleyn. And the order of what happened to his wives were divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, and survived. Congratulations, Catherine Parr. <laughs> Can you imagine this woman, Catherine Parr, who was 31 years old, she was twice widowed, and she caught the eye and affections of King Henry VIII. And back then, you could not refuse a royal proposal. She had to say yes. And just imagine knowing what happened to all of the wives who came before you. So the book is just great. It's just suspenseful. She also had another love she was interested in pursuing. You'll find out what happens to that. Wonderful news. Simon & Schuster have offered to give away one copy of Queen's Gambit to a reader of The Daily Connoisseur. So if you go to the blog, you can enter that giveaway. It's just um, a really well-written book, and it is on sale now as well. And I'll put all of the links below. So if you go to the blog, you can enter and win your own copy. Okay, next I want to discuss with you is this book called The Butler Speaks by Charles McPherson. And of course when I saw that this book was out, I had to get it. You know me. I love this stuff. Basically, Charles McPherson has been a butler his entire life. He knows absolutely everything about running a home well. And that's what this book is. It's a guide to stylish, entertaining etiquette and the art of good housekeeping. And it's just a nice little manual to have. I mean, there's diagrams about cutlery and setting the table properly. All those little domestic questions. Setting a tea table for two people. You know I love this stuff. I love this stuff. And so I really did enjoy this book. It's written for other butlers, but I think that anyone who has a home who would like it um, to run well would enjoy this book. It's just very technical, but the writing is fun. It's just a great read and a wonderful um, resource to have. The Butler Speaks by Charles McPherson. Okay, the next book is Through the French Door by Carolyn Westbrook. And this is um, an interior design book, so there's obviously writing in it, but it's just wonderful to look at the pictures and get design inspiration for it. Look at that. I mean, that is an entryway. Obviously, most of us don't have grand houses like these, but you can always just pick up just design ideas, colors, and the photography is really beautiful and I, I received a lot of design inspiration from this. We did a bit of redecorating this summer in our living room and um, I'm so happy with it all. So I got a lot of inspiration from this book so I wanted to share it with you. Through the French Door by Carolyn Westbrook. Okay, so the next book. Anyone who knows me knows that I 
have a near obsession with the Victorian era. I always have, ever since I was a little girl. Um, so that's why I love shows like Mr. Selfridge, um, anything that sort of examines the Victorian era, Sherlock Holmes. So I saw this book, Inside the Victorian Home, by Judith Flanders. And I absolutely had to read it. It is a portrait of domestic life in Victorian England, but what it was really like, not the sort of glamorous Downton Abbey-esque life that we all know from film and television, but what was it really like to live back then when we didn't have so many modern conveniences that we have today? And it goes room by room, and it is so meticulous. I mean, you'll see, I've... I've underlined <laughs> paragraphs. I have highlighted things. It goes from the kitchen to the scullery, um, to the nursery, to the drawing room. And it just talks about what it was like to live back then um, for the maids, for the cook, for the lady of the house, what it was like if you didn't have very much staff. It is so fascinating. So this obviously is nonfiction, but if you have a love or an interest of the Victorian era like I do, you must read this book. It is just truly and utterly fascinating. So my editor Trish Todd, who I already mentioned knows me so well, she sent me an advanced copy of Lady Pamela Hicks' new book, Daughter of Empire, My Life as a Mountbatten. And I just got this a few days ago and I've already started reading it, you can see. It's so good, it's so juicy. If you like uh, to know about royalty and aristocracy in England, you um, will probably want to read this book. So I think it comes out in the States in September, early September. Yeah, September 3rd. So. I just wanted to quickly mention this as well. I haven't read the whole thing. I just started it, but it's so juicy. Uh, I could hardly put it down last night, so this is great. Also, I don't have a hard copy. Um, it's on my Kindle, but I did read Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, and that really was an unputdownable thriller. So I'm sure most of you have already read it already, but if you haven't and you like thrillers, dark thrillers with twists, you will really like Gone Girl. The ending is controversial. I won't say anything more because I don't want to give it away, but um, I really did enjoy that book, so I wanted to give it an honorable mention. And last but not least, I hope that you have picked up The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz and have started to read it because um, just in a few weeks time we're going to start our Daily Connoisseur Four Agreements book club where we are going to go through each agreement and I'm going to tell you my personal journey with this book. So if you haven't already picked it up, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Okay, that's a lot of reading for you. So. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, there's so much great stuff to come on The Daily Connoisseur. I can't wait um, to share it with you. So don't forget to go visit my blog, dailyconnoisseur.com, and enter to win a copy of Queen's Gambit by Elizabeth Fremantle. Thank you for joining me on The Daily Connoisseur. I'll see you soon.